Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. In this video today I'm going to be showing you how to set the valve clearances on this Briggs and Stratton lawnmower engine. Although I'm doing this on a Briggs and Stratton engine, the principle is the same for most four stroke single cylinder engines with an overhead valve. You can tell it's got an overhead valve because this one says overhead valve on the cover. This is a rocker cover so it will be an overhead valve engine if it's got this rocker cover on the front of it. So the first thing to do is remove the rocker cover. It's a good idea to have a bit of rag to catch any excess oil from the rocker cover. And there we can see it exposes the rocker arms and the push rods and the valve springs here. To make it easier to turn the engine over by hand, I removed all the plastic covers off the top of the engine to access the flywheel here. The next thing you want to do is remove the spark plug and that will allow you to rotate the engine freely without it compressing. So as you can see the valves are opening and closing now as I turn the engine. In order to help people understand what I'm doing I've drawn a simple four stroke engine. So the first stroke is the intake stroke. That's when the inlet valve is open, the fuel air mixture is drawn into the cylinder this is a piston here. The piston comes down, it draws the fuel air mixture into the cylinder. Take note, the inlet valve is open and the exhaust valve is closed. Once the piston has drawn the fuel air mixture into the cylinder, it is then compressed. This is the compression stroke. At the top of the compression stroke, this is also known as top dead center. Both the valves are closed. Because both the valves are closed, this is the point here, just before the power stroke at which you can adjust the valves and check the clearances. The third stroke is a power stroke. The fuel air mixture is ignited and you get internal combustion. Power stroke pushes the piston down. And then finally, the exhaust stroke, piston comes down and then back up and the exhaust gases exit the exhaust valve here. So there are different methods for doing this, but I'm gonna show you what I believe to be the easiest for adjusting the valve clearances on a single cylinder engine and that's to put it in the top dead center position and then both of the valves should be off cam and you can do your valve clearances. So the first thing you need to work out is which one's the intake valve and which one's the exhaust valve. So you can see here, the intake valve on the bottom is in line with the carburetor. So that's on the intake side. And up here, this must be the exhaust valve because it's in line with the exhaust manifold there. So if we turn the engine over by hand, Okay, so these are rocking and that's just about to start its intake stroke. So the intake valve opens, the fuel air mixture goes into the cylinder, the cylinder comes up to the top, sorry the piston comes up to the top, that's the compression cycle. So that is top dead centre there, just before the power stroke. So if we get that right at top depth center, I can put my screwdriver in where the spark plug goes and I can feel when the piston's right at the top. So the piston's right at the top there. So this is at top dead center. You've got a little bit of play. Both these valves are closed and you can set your valve clearances. The valve clearance specifications are different depending on what engine you've got. For this particular engine, I had to get in contact with Briggs & Stratton because I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, so the intake valve clearance is 5 valve or 0.13 millimeters, and the exhaust valve clearance is 7 valve or 0.18 millimeters. So I've got my feeler gauges, 7 valve and 5 valve, 0.13 millimeters. So this is for the intake and this is for the exhaust. So I can then put the feeler gauge behind here. Now I'll show you how to adjust them. On this engine, the adjustment's done on the nut. It's got a little locking hex screw in here. So I loosen that off. And I can get my feeler gauge. So for the exhaust, put that in here. That's a bit loose, so I can just tighten that down a little bit. You want a little bit of resistance 
but not too much. A little bit more. That feels good to me. So once you're happy with it, hold the nut in place and tighten up. Do the same for this one. So I'll unlock it. Get my 5 foul feeler gauge. Put that in there. Carefully lock this in place. Double check. Feels good. Right, okay. I'm gonna rotate the engine for a couple of couple of turns. I'll show you another way of checking. So when the intake valve is fully open, just before it starts coming back up. We check the exhaust valve clearance. Let me have a look. There we go. And then when the exhaust valve is fully open, before it starts coming back up, we check the valve clearance on the intake and they feel good to me. A little tiny bit of resistance there. So with the engine in top dead centre position, we can put our feeler gauges in and there should be a little bit of resistance. Not too tight, not too loose. So I'm going to go ahead and put this rocker cover back on now. And put the lawnmower back together. This is a lawnmower I restored ages ago. Um, it's probably one of my favourites, so I'll just hang on to this one. I'm going to be putting it back in storage over the winter. Um, I'll get it back out in the summer, but I'm just draining the fuel out. Drained off all the excess fuel and burnt off whatever's left in the carb. So now I can store this knowing that the carburetor is not going to get all gummed up or blocked up with old fuel. Just to put things into perspective, this is a really big lawnmower. I'm not just a really small person. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and enjoyed watching it. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support that I'm getting on this channel. Um, it really means a lot and it means I can carry on making these videos. So if you haven't already, please click that big red button and the little alarm bell and that way you'll get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next time. Take care.